All right, all right. I'm going to send invite now. What's up, Lewis? Oh. Hey, what's up, dog? You got the outdoors today, huh? Yeah, he's uh, hitting mitts, yeah. Huh? Holy shit, you got him here already, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, while people are rolling in, like, I figured I'd just ask you about that because, you know, like, if any major trainers in the U.S. hadn't trained somebody, for like 15 years I yeah it's a big deal but you know for some reason it's kind of flown over everybody's heads kind of Car. what what made you decide to start training uh start training him for this sidario well because of the pandemic i'm at home i'm at home all day before uh before this, I couldn't train anyone because I was always uh, traveling. And um, he got he uh, quit sumo, and he was going to um, fight, so he didn't have nowhere to go. And you know uh, Konishki Sawe? Yeah. He contacted me, and he asked me to train him. And it was it wasn't like to train him like in a, like start training fighters. It was just like he has to fight in September. And he doesn't have nowhere to train. Can you train him? So I go, yeah, call, have him come down. So that's how it pretty much started. We started training him like that. Yeah, but I mean, you know, for people that aren't aware, I mean, I'm sure the people follow you know, but you had, mm -hmm. I mean, especially at the height of, I would say, Shuto and, you know, Pride Bushido, you had a number of really good fighters. And then you just kind of stopped training people. Why was that? I just go, I think I just was burned out. I was just... uh you know, during my, when I was fighting, you know, it was like freaking fighting, like training like eight hours a day, every day for how many years? And I, I, I don't know, I just was burnt out. And, you know, Ikeda took over my gym. And uh, I just felt that, um, just took a step back, started traveling, started doing seminars, uh, and didn't, um, I don't know, didn't, I, I just, just because burnt out. I just want to say some burnt out. I was just burnt out. Training, you know, training, as you know, if you properly train someone, it takes a lot of time, yeah? But, I mean, as far as your commitment to him, is this something you're going to jump into, like before? Yeah, well, what happened was it was only supposed to be a one-month thing. And after that month was over, he came and talked to me, and he said he doesn't want to train with anyone else who wants to train under me. So... <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, it's helped Sarah because Sarah's trying to fight and Sarah's got been getting super good training in because we've been doing it, like, every single day. Like, a full-time thing for him because, um, especially now he fights, you know, he's been fighting pretty consistently. His next fight is on December 31st, yeah? Yeah, against Man Manoa, yeah. Yeah, against <clears throat> Manoa. So, and then, you know, because he's here, if there's other fighters that want to come and train and become I and mean, start a stable, I'm actually considering that. You know, I'm spending mm -hmm. so much time with them. It's like, uh, I know I, uh, I can easily take in more fighters, more sparring partners. So I'm even thinking of sending them over to Vegas to train. All kinds of options. He's a big boy, man. And, and you know, right now I, I got an injured knee, so I can't really spar. But, Car, I'm going to have to start. Um, <laughs> My knee's getting better now, so I think I'm going to have to start sparring with him because he's been sparring with Zuzu and Kato, and it just hasn't been enough. It's, I mean, they're just too too small for him. And with the, the amount he's improving, man, I mean, you know, he's going to need better sparring partners. Yeah, what, what do you think he could do? What do you think he could do as far as, you know, guys? I think he's going to be a threat in the sport. UFC. I think, think he's going to have that kind of. Yeah, I think he's going to be a threat in the UFC. He's only twenty three, man. And he's still learning. So I've, I've been, I've been with him. He's been a sumo fighter. He's been, he, I've been with him for about um, two and a half months now. So to watch him hit mitts, I mean, 
I'll catch you on the next round. But he's uh, he's 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 getting pretty um natural. His ground movement is picking up unbelievably. So kind of looking forward to it, man. I mean, this guy has. He's already like giving Kato a hard time. I mean, submitting Zuzu, you know. And these guys are veterans. So, thinking about two months, two and a half months. I mean, just think about when he gets two and a half years in, man. It's, it's, he's, he's, he's tough, too. He pushes. There's a, I don't know if you know about it, but do we have this circuit training? Where I do, yeah. It's like a, he fucking pushes through circuit training and improves his numbers almost every single week. So, the, the drive and the, um, Pushing through pain is amazing. We're yet to see when he gets into a big adverse situation in the fight how much his heart's going to pull through. But uh, I think he's going to pull through. He's only young. he's still young, and you know during the training like that, I'm giving him verbal, mental tips. You know when he hit the to to overcome the pain and the the hard training. So I don't know. Yeah, it's it's so promising. Try, try, let's watch his mitts a little bit. Yeah. This is okay. a guy that's been doing sumo <clears throat> and been training only two and a half months. Yeah, and for anybody who's watching this, we're watching uh, Siyoshi Sadario kind of nice, training here. Nice. And since new uh, MMA fighter, so to speak, first one in a long time. <clears throat> yeah, and I'm kind of amazed that a lot of people never really picked up on that. I don't know if Japanese media had asked you about that, but I haven't really seen American media talk about that. And you had a ton of good fighters, you know. Yeah, I, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to start trying to, I mean, he's got, uh, I wanted to get more ring time. And, it's a, I mean, there's no rust in him, his name to become in the, the world media. It's going to happen. I mean, it's already being talked about in the forum, so slowly. <clears throat> I mean, I, I'd say in a, in a couple of fights, I'm okay with him stepping in for a, a fight that's too big for him. Someone that's too good. You know, I, you think, know, I, think, I think losses make fighters more than wins. Yeah. You know, Manoa took away all those rules. I mean, what do you think about that as far as how are you going to approach it? Okay, my first, uh, my first feeling on that was what a pussy, you know. That was my first feeling, like, fuck, he's fought all these other guys with the regular rules, and why is he doing this now? And then, you know, I, I almost felt like if he's going to have to change the rules that drastically, he shouldn't even fight, you know? But oh, it is within the rules, and the fact that he's 44 and probably not training as much and probably not as confident, well, I don't know, I, I'm thinking there might be like a, you know, like a, it's a good uh, comf um, confidence booster because he must be worried for him to make all those rules. If he wasn't worried, he wouldn't care. Mm -hmm. But it's a good I mean, thing for it's a good thing with Shoshi because he was super um, bummed about that. He was super worried about it, and mm -hmm. it's that it's that mental state, yeah, that he gets worried and then he starts, you know, he he has to learn to overcome worry because sometimes. A day or two before the fight, shit's gonna change. You know, like how the UFC changes your opponent, and so, you know, I I, I stayed positive and I said, hey, you know what? That's the way it is, man. We can work around it, man. There's a lot of other things you can do. You know, you. I mean, his thing is, you know, is gonna shoot. He, this kid, if he if he he gets on top of you and he's sprawling on you, you're not gonna get up. So, you know, of course, the, the best strategy would have been to just drop knees on you know until he quits. Which he probably could have, but now he's got to get more. Um, he's got to get more. Uh, you know, creative. He he has to maybe hold him down with his hands and try and hit his head, and maybe do a hammer fist when he tries to sit guard. You know, there's all kinds of stuff we can work on. So, yeah, you know, life's a so, bitch. You know, does Ryzen give Manoa the choice to change the rules? I mean, how does that work? Um, you know, it's, uh, under. I think it's under. 20 pounds or something you can you can choose that hmm. I, I think pride was like that too yeah in pride um, if you are a smaller fighter you could choose you could choose to um uh, do something like you know do that you think maybe Mano is like trying to play head games with him or something no I think Mano is uh, literally concerned after seeing the first fight yeah so I, in a way, it shows that Mino is not taking him lightly. You know, I mean, it's a kind of a compliment if you really think about it. 
And, and you know, with him being like a former sumo uh, competitor, is he getting a lot of buzz in Japan? Yes, he is super huge, man. Because you got to figure, um, the Noriarty or the fame that I have is within only the fighting world, yeah? His his fame is in the the, the common people, the old people, the, the young people, you know, people who watch regular TV on sumo. So his fans are huge. And so is, it, is that kind of, are you guys training both at Purebred and then kind of outside your house too like that? Yeah. Yeah, but because of the pandemic, we were trying to stay away from uh, pure bit a lot. Right. So it makes it a little harder, but, you know, that's the way it is, man. Life throws just curveballs on it, yeah? Yeah, I mean, over here, like, nobody's doing anything. They're all just training like they always did, you know. But <laughs> oh, you guys got to keep track of your training. Maybe that's why the numbers are so high. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, would, I, would, I reckon it is, yeah. You know that um, you know that uppercut hook, punch, right cross? You know how he's sitting on it real hard. Yeah. Have him more more arm. Yeah. Yeah, and if you guys have any questions for Anson, I'll read some of them. If if you guys want to say anything, I mean, <laughs> that's kind of why I do this. If you guys have any questions, Sakino, for him, that are... Sakino, but right now he's training somebody, so you can kind of watch some of this if you want to. But... <laughs> Boom, boom, don't have to move. Boom, boom, boom. Oh. Yeah. yeah, so some of the, a lot of the combinations, no, try to do it where it's like a more arm. He needs to concentrate on defending the shot. Okay. So more arm, more short. Even the right could be short. Boom, boom, and the last one big. And always be ready to sprawl on every punch. Yeah. <clears throat> If you guys have any questions, just type them in here. I'll try to read it. Yeah, it's going to be ready. Not sprawl, yeah. Okay, so let's see. 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 <laughs> okay. Yeah, they're kind of watching you train them and stuff. Um, you know, if you could compare him to anybody, like maybe some guys you worked with before, how is he different being like a sumo competitor? He's like, no, he's like a, he's like a huge Nori. <laughs> yeah, because that's, uh, that's Nori a scary was the thing. Same way. Nori was the same way because Nori would pick up shit really fast. And this kid does the same thing, man. So he moves good. His hip movements is awesome. You know, everything's... I get a lot of flashbacks from that, you know, when I train Nori, yeah? Wow. And, and it's the fact that he's huge. He's freaking young. He's going to... He, I'm, I'm, I'm almost positive he's going to make noise in the world. So it's just a matter of time when I'm going to drop Dana email. I don't want to get too fast on it and, you know, drop an email too fast. But now that they have the contender series, yeah, that's pretty cool. So when this pandemic cools down a little bit, I'm thinking, you know, hey, what's up, Dana? Check this guy out. I know yeah. Dana needs heavyweights too, and this guy's exciting. Did you see his last fight? Yeah, it's like he went balls out on the guy. Yeah, I was just kind of wanting to – so, you so, know, so, kind so. of talk to you and kind of pick your brain about it, you know. <clears throat> you know, because I saw you when you had so many good fighters before. And I think pe maybe people today don't even realize it. Because, you know, you had Kato, you had Nori, you had Kuobaro, Ishikawa, Ikeda, Asagi. No, no Naka was good, too. Yeah, No Naka. Yeah. So, like, I mean, if Greg Jackson stopped training people for 15 years, people want to know why. But you know what I mean? It's like, I guess American media hasn't even picked up on this stuff. So when I saw you were training this guy, I was like, man, I wonder why he's even doing this. You know, because he hasn't been training anybody. Yeah, well, least, other know, than Sarah. Yeah. To be honest, if it wasn't, you know how the pandemic's kind of fucked up 
is there, there's some good things to it. If there wasn't for the pandemic, I wouldn't be doing this. Really? Yeah, because the pandemic allowed me to stay home. The pandemic, I got so much time here that I may as well, you know. But if they approached you outside the pandemic, would you have said no? Yes, probably because what? I would be traveling. I wouldn't, you know, if I'm not going to be able to dedicate enough time to them, I wouldn't, I, I, I'm not going to, you know, I wouldn't take the job. You know, I, I'm not going to do anything half-assed. And if I was traveling, there's no way because right now I'd probably be in Hawaii selling bracelets. Yeah. In the regular schedule. And then in January, I'd be at the um, Coronado in, in San Diego with the SEALs, you know. So um, I wouldn't be here. But how do you handle it going forward then? That's the tricky one, yeah. So it's going to see. I'm I'm actually basing my schedule around Sarah and Chelsea's fight schedule now. That's why, you know, my, my ideal is to go to my shop in Hawaii in December because that's the Christmas sales. But because of his fight in uh, December, I had to. I made it in, in November. Mm. That probably did hurt sales because everyone wants to buy shit in December. But man, you know, this that shows that I'm I'm actually uh, working around his schedule too. Yeah. But if he has success, he's going to be more demanded, right? Yeah, and do I just going to include traveling? I want to take him to try train at um. You know some 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 connections that I have in the in the states, but as you know, the pandemic's really nuts right now, and you know, you know this quarantine shit. Like I'm I'm still quar I'm actually quarantining. I'm that's why I'm home. I can't go to gyms now. I, I'm on my fourth day quarantine, so I got another ten days after this. And you, you guys have to keep track of the training partners more because I know I was talking to Zach Biscop about that, and he was saying that. What do you mean? Well, he said he, they were almost like limiting who they were training with so they could keep track of who they were training with more, you know? Yeah. I'm doing the, if they I'm, got sick. Well, I'm doing the same thing. Yes, pretty much he's training here, training with me, training with um, Zuzu and Kato pretty much. That's pretty much all we have. Is that because the numbers of purebred? Have, oh, well, I mean, yeah, you have the pandemic. I guess that's a dumb question. The pandemic, um, because we had, you know, we have a Daigo, we have a Daiskin, purebred gym, these two good fighters. It's just a pandemic, and, you know, just being safe, you know. I mean, you know, what's the sense of getting super good training in if he gets the virus, you know, and he can't fight? <laughs> when they do the test, do you have to send it to your opponent? No, what we do is they, they take we go into the office. Uh, I think it was three days before the fight, and then they take a saliva test. So I don't know how accurate that is, but we spit into a vial, and then we get the results. Like you know, you you're okay. You can come or you can't come. You know, because <laughs> Zach said he had he had he showed me his kit, and he said he had to give it to himself. I guess no, we deep. go we go in, in Japan. We do it down there. We go down there and do it. Yeah, he was fighting in deep, and he said they made him give it to himself, and then he mailed it to his opponent. Oh, nice, nice, nice. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and that was just last week that I was is talking that, to him. Uh, is that for what, the UFC like that? No, no, deep. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, he even showed me. Here's my kit. I have to do it myself. Then I have to take it to deep, show that it's not. I guess, there's a, I guess there's a lot of holes, you know? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so you got to do, sir. Um, it should be all, most most of the round should be um, like 60% punches, more concentrated on his balance. You got not how many questions so for Anson? Just put him here. The, uh, I mean. When you say Kitiru, is like when he's hurt, Kitiru. That's when he starts loading it, yeah. We're but just talking show, about show, round, 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 something.最初の方がもう本当にね一番心配はもう乗せすぎないもう最初の心配はもう乗せすぎないもう最初の心配はもう乗せすぎないもう最初の心配はもう乗せすぎないもう最初の心配はもう乗せすぎないもう最初の心配
you know, you know, as you, if he got more busy, would your guys train him as well or why? Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, see, the thing is with him is, um, he's, he's like a new mode of clay that I kind of don't want him to develop real bad habits. So what I want him to, I want to make sure I'm overseeing all his training. Even when I was in Hawaii, I was, uh, I was getting sent videos and uh, directing the training in Hawaii. Hmm. So maybe you bring him to Hawaii to train or something? For sure, yeah. That's a that's a definite. I want to bring him to Vegas and I want to bring him to Extreme Couture. Also have uh, you know like um, the arena in San Diego with Barrett. Yeah, Ensign's training live, but this is part of the reason that I, I wanted to talk to him was about this fighter. So the fact that he's training him here is perfect, actually. <laughs> People are commenting about you training live, you know? Well, it just so happened that um, we're supposed to do the training an hour earlier, but um, everything came a little late, and it just so happened that uh, I thought we were going to be done with training when it started, so. But it, yeah, but it's apparently, cool. Apparently not. <laughs> yeah, it's cool to do it this way. Yeah, he is a big guy. This guy said, yeah, that's a big boy. Heavyweight, you know, he could – Japan doesn't really have a lot of heavyweight yeah. fighters so or bigger fighters, so, you know, that would be good for them. <clears throat> Touch his knees too every so often. Yeah, yeah, so Jota, Jota, that's it. So, 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 a different world, man. You know, I miss that stuff. You know, I miss Japan a lot. <laughs> Especially, like you were saying, that's probably why the numbers are so high. I miss stuff about Japan, like just people you know, not being ignorant, you know? I think that's how I fell in love with Japan, man. It's just that culture yeah. and the, the, the mannerism, the, you know, the, the way they respect the higher up and pretty much don't question, you know. You know, how much has Sarah come along as far as a trainer, you know, like holding myths for him and stuff? How do you well, feel Sarah's, she's developed? From the beginning, Sarah's been like an awesome trainer, but more than that, I'm kind of excited because Sarah's last fight was like over a year, over a year and a half ago, yeah? Yeah. And because of um, the lack of opponents and then the, because uh, she had a, a bad weight cut once, you know, so her body kind of, you know, women, the body's more complicated, so kind of went a little haywire. She's working with a um, a nutritionist, and she's uh you know helping with get everything back together. She's ready to fight, but um because of the pandemic, uh, Rising can't bring in any uh, big foreign names, so there's no girls here that can that that are that that weight. I mean, King Reina is that that weight, but I don't know I don't know why they're not offering her King Reina. They're just saying they can't find an opponent for this next event. I mean. It's going to be exciting because the improvement she's made is is going to be real prevalent. Yeah, but as a trainer, like how 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 long ago was she getting like you know uh, comfortable doing that? Oh, um, I don't know. She was natural. She picked it up real fast. I mean, when we were holding mitts for the kids at like Watanabe Gym, it was like real obvious that she was super good at that. And I. She was way better than me, you know. So, <laughs> someone here is asking, "Are you planning to go back up to Fukushima?" Yes, uh, December twenty fifth. Um, you know, it was a whole crazy situation because because of the pandemic, we couldn't do that. We couldn't go to the Fukushima like that. So hold on, thirty seconds. No, oh, power, power, power. Keep to the keep to the ima. I I so I so, so, Taiji no city. So, so. Yeah, he was training with Barrett. Yeah, this guy's mentioning Barrett. Barrett was in Japan, I think, the year before I was, right? 
Yeah. Barrett yeah. came up to train MMA with us in uh, Purebred. Yeah, I think that's 2001. He was doing shoot up okay. contenders, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, that's where he met his wife. Yeah. Wasn't he living with Kid Yamamoto too? Um, no, we're, I put them in the, I put him and Kid in the same uh, apartment complex. Oh. But, Do you uh, still have that place? No. That was part of Unosato, the, the Kenko Center, yeah, the health center. Oh. So, so they like took it away from you or what? No, the um, that's the land the gym was on, but the gym the land was actually bought out by a pachinko parlor. So there's no uh, <laughs> we had to move we had to move the gym the the used cars dealer that was there and the food catering service that was there all gone, and it's a huge pachinko parlor right now. Oh man, that's right up your alley. I think that's where I met you. Is a pachinko parlor, wasn't it? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's ironic. Yeah, yeah. So what was I talking about before that? Oh, uh, you were talking about we were talking about how Sarah was developing as a trainer and you yeah. know how she was getting comfortable very quickly and you felt that she was doing better than you do as far as maybe some of the myths oh, and stuff. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So she's already been down to the arena to train. And worked with Liz Carmouche and, you know, a lot of the girls on there. Um, I want to send her to, you know, Vegas to train with some of the people there. There's Raquel Paolui with Good Ground with Hanauto. Also, she's uh, she's in touch with Elimine. I mean, there's a lot of people that I want her to just go and mix with. Yeah. I was wondering, like, you know, going back to why you had this little issue with this guy. I know. It blew up. I thought it was, you know, that stuff I'm used to seeing over there when I was there. But, uh, you know, how irritating is that? You know, because you're in Japan all the time. You're from Hawaii. You go back there and you got to deal with these people. You know? It was super frustrating. It was, at first it was kind of personal. Like, how would he dare do that to me? But, of course, he didn't know who I was. He didn't. These chronic guys are just wandering into open doors. Because my shop does not have a sign on the bottom saying there's a shop here. Nothing like that. It's totally like a, he just wandered into open building. So there's a problem in Hawaii. And um, I'm kind of glad I don't live there because it was uh, upsetting me to a point where I wanted to go look for the guy. It was upsetting me to a point where I wanted to start doing shit on my own, you know. And... I felt I felt the old me coming out, and I kind of want to just go past, you know, say bye to that old guy, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially when you live in Japan, it's difficult to come back and deal with that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. I mean, it's, I, mean it's, I, I feel real privileged to live in Japan. You don't need to worry about that kind of shit. Uh, you know, I watched that, uh, I watched your uh, podcast with that, um, that ex-cop in Hawaii. Yeah. But that live, that's fuck. That guy, I, I watch this channel because he's super informative. He knows a lot of shit, man. He knows more than me in Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. That was really he was on the beat man. for seven years, so. You know. But yeah, I mean, you know, he, it seems that, you know, he understands how the crime in Hawaii now. You know that guy who came into my shop? You know that he, uh, one and a half hours later, he went into a. A lay, uh, another shop down the street, which is called the, I think it's called the Babe Cave. They do like eyelashes and uh, all women's stuff. He tried to get in there. They wouldn't let him in because it's by appointment. And he's a guy, of course. There's no sense he's going, he's going in there. And he kicked, started kicking their door. I mean, that guy um, was, you know, another tattoo parlor called me. Said that they, uh, he broke their window. And in a way, you know, I. I felt like, oh, shit, I should have beat the guy up. But then, you know, if I beat him up, I might have wrecked my shop. Um, there might be a lawsuit on me. You know, I mean, all these things went through my head. But what I do regret is I have a, a good tact of making people think that their life is going to end. <laughs> and I have a good way of making people think that, you know, reconsider some of the things they do. I mean, I've I've made the some of the toughest Yakuza guys cry, you know, so... I just regret not lo turning around and locking the door 
and sitting down and using my uh, ability to do that to let him know, uh, you know, how what this what situation he's in and what actually what could really happen if I yeah, was. Yeah, but a these guys idiot. got like hepatitis and stuff, you know. Yeah, exactly. You know that yeah. that that was another reason why I really hesitated because I I didn't really want to touch him. Yeah, he wasn't stink like a homeless guy, but you could tell he was a druggie. Yeah, imagine grabbing him and tackling him, and then there's a fucking open needle in his pocket, and I gets poked with it, and got to take tests, and oh Jesus Christ, not worth it. Yeah, yeah I mean, but I like... can't believe how that thing blew up. Yeah, it's like hitting all the porn. It hit, it hit Yahoo News in Japan. I mean. Well, that's because they're not used to it. But anyone lives in Hawaii, I mean, they're used to dealing with these people, you know. It's a it's an everyday occurrence in Hawaii. Yeah, right? it's it's a uh, it's unfortunate. If you guys got any questions for Anson, just shoot them in here. We're kind of good. That's good. Just talking right now, you know. So so so. So no, no, basta nakto ni. So no, so. Main reason I do these so people can talk to people that I have on here. So if you guys have a question you want to ask. It's just training a uh, Sidario in the street <laughs> at the moment. So. <clears throat> kind of like a old school uh, playing ball in the street. You have to stop for the cars and everything. It's the gym right there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Keep it. Keep it. So, Taiji no city. So, Taiji no city. So, so, so. Okay, sure, sure to tackle now. Maybe catch us up on some of like your old fighters that you had. What are they doing? A lot of them, I think, Cool Bottle's a chiropractor. Ishikawa has his own gym. Nonaka's a dentist. Ikeda's running Gilbert for me. Hato's still training like an active fighter, you know. Yeah, Anson is going to be back in San Diego. This guy asked about that. He he just mentioned that before you came on, actually. Yeah, I was supposed to be there. Like, uh, I missed, like, two trips there. I was supposed to be there uh, in September, and I was supposed to be there in uh, January. So, looking at, looking, looking, to, trying to get there in the summer, not sure. Good. Okay, so this is interesting. This guy said Boku, Yachi, and... Uh... I don't know who the other person even, they left Crazy B. Did you hear about that? Yep. What happened there? I think there's a problem with the father. I think uh, what happened with that is there was a guy, uh, Hattori. He was like the management. He's a little guy. He was a manager for uh, Crazy B. And and he uh, apparently they really um, unfairly fired him. Huh. And I think that he had a loyalty of a lot of those fighters, and they they kind of went with him. Oh, they're I think they're training under free, and but I think they're they're training a lot at Isi's gym. Isi has a new gym, yeah. Yeah, we're going to actually go there and train a couple times. So, uh, and somebody else asked. We actually talked about this on my podcast, and it's in a talk. You haven't been back to Guam since we did the podcast, right? So you still haven't been back yet. No, I mean, Guam's real bad right now. I think they're having a lockdown again, a shutdown. Yeah, because someone's asking, when are you going to go back? And I kind of talked to you about that a little bit. I want to go start... back next year for sure. But, but of course, corona, you know, the pandemic is uh, deciding all these things. Right. Good. Good. Yeah. yeah, if you come to the U.S., it's not deciding anything. You just do whatever you want. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> no shit, yeah. I mean, in Hawaii, no, but like where I live, people are doing whatever they want. <clears throat> so I know it's, it's kind of strange. <laughs> but you know, UFC. I think UFC had to cancel three fights tonight. Oh, really? Because of Corona? Two because of Corona, and one because the guy was hiding pink eye right up to the event. He had been wearing shades everywhere, <clears throat> and they found out he had pink eye like an hour before the show. Oh, Manuel King got canceled too. Shit, I wanted to see that fight. Ah, his yeah. opponent. You know, Manuel King, the guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was looking I was forward, kind of looking to that forward too. to that guy's kind of exciting, man. Say hi to Sarah, everybody. Sarah, you, Sarah, you look good doing that stuff, man. <laughs> Thank you. Anson said you're coming along as the the Mick, Mick Queen. I I don't know. <laughs> 
I just help it out. I just help out a teammate. I wouldn't consider myself a a trainer or anything. Yeah, but you said you're you're picking it up. You know, I was asking how you're developing as a trainer. <laughs> if you're out there, I was like, hey, you got her out there. I mean, yeah, yeah. He, said, he said he's comfortable having you do it. So, oh, that's that's nice of him. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you think about you know working with a uh, Sidario? Uh, it's been good. Like you said, he's real. Um, like he's real, real polite, real proper, which is good. He's like, he's never, like he doesn't say he's never kind of questioned what we ask him to do or, or tell him to do. And he pushes super hard. So I've been to all bar one of his circuit trainings. Um, and yeah, even the, the coach or the, the guy who owns the gym was saying he hasn't seen people push like that since um, like Ensign's kind of time. So yes, yeah, it's, it's super exciting. Yeah, I was telling Ensign, you know, I've, I've known him a long time and, you know, he really hasn't trained a guy that I know of for MMA in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. At least well, I, I, He's trained you, but you know, really since Nori, I haven't seen him, you know, really working with someone to any real big degree. Yeah. So, yeah. so I was kind of telling him I'm surprised that no one noticed this besides me, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> in the media, yeah. you know, because it's a big yeah. deal, I think. It's a yeah, an interesting story that no one it went over everybody's head, you know. Well, the the Japanese media definitely picked up on it. Um, uh -huh. When it after in the lead up to his first fight, so that was kind of like his his re entry, I suppose, into the the martial right. arts world. And everyone was really excited, and then for Siyoshi to perform like he did, um, got the like the kind of the fight world here even more excited. Because they're saying, well, Ensign's back with a student, and it's kind of someone that emulates something that he would have done when he was fighting. So they're definitely excited about that. <laughs> now, how long? I know you've been in Japan for a few years now. How long? Yeah, going seven years. Just over, yeah, seven years. Yikes. <laughs> so what, do you think, so far. what do you think about all of it? You know, like maybe from beginning to now, like. Maybe talk um, about some of that. <clears throat> well, I think one thing that I still struggle with is my, my Japanese isn't great. It isn't what it should be because obviously Ensign speaks English. So a lot of it's English at home. But um, it's better than I thought it was at the same time because we'll yep. go places and I'm finding that like, Ensign doesn't have to translate for me as much as he used to. So that's kind of, that's a nice feeling. Um, for him too, because it's obviously less work. It can get kind of tiring translating all the time. Um, that the I don't know. I, I think we actually live a different type of like we don't live the conventional Japanese life here. I mean, even our home is like a regular sized home. It's you know we, yeah. we're fortunate to have a big home in a yard. So yeah, you know, our Japanese friends and family love coming here. To, like cruise in the yard and stuff because people don't have yards and it's um so I think we we do live life with rose tinted glasses a little bit here. So we do your like neighbors like hearing stuff. the dogs. Pardon? Do your neighbors like hearing the dogs? Oh my gosh! I mean, it's a good thing we're actually out. If you look around here, we we live relatively rural. Like we're kind of in a, a real small town, which is great because if we're in the city, um. Yeah, we'd be getting all sorts of noise complaints. But um, there's a few dogs in our neighborhood too, but none as noisy as ours. And before we had our dogs, I used to hear the neighbor's dogs kind of going off. And I'd kind of be, you know, cussing. And <laughs> But now I take all of that back and <laughs> I feel so sorry for them. <laughs> yeah, I lived in a similar neighborhood and I like never heard anyone's pets. You know? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so it was kind of like, it was different. So when do you think like you might compete again? Um, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm I'm good to go. I kind of really, I really really want to get in there, but um, to be honest with training, it's been really hard to stay focused with training because I've had nothing booked. And then, I mean, as fighters know, just kind of constantly being in some sort of fight camp, it gets you start burning out a little bit. So I'm trying to manage that. That's where I'm at at the moment. Trying to manage that. Trying to stay focused. 
um, and hoping that as soon as the borders open, um, they can get me an opponent. Yeah. How do you think Henson's going to be able to work with Sidario if he if he has a lot of success? He's going to be want they want him to compete more. Um, How do you, he's going to handle that. I think he's I think he's going to be fine. I think it's um. <clears throat> I think that's where I come into because we work really well as a team, Edson and I, like mm -hmm. how he's been away and I kind of help out with the training. So I think as long as we work together and work around, you know, our schedules or whatever other projects we've got going on, I think we'll manage. And um, I think he's actually, I mean, you can hear when he talks about him, he's really excited yeah. about the, just the potential of this guy is just insane. Yeah, it's. It, I mean, I was holding Mitt's room, and we just finished watching a Mike Tyson um, <laughs> video, and he just instinctively, kind of, mm -hmm. when I stepped in, he kind of instinctively moved, kind of like pivoted around me, and I kind of, I got, so, I was surprised, and he kind of looked. He goes, "Oh, I'm sorry. I, I just saw that we just, we just watched that, and I thought I'd just try it." I was like, "Oh my god!" Like he can implement things. Yeah. It's almost like playing music by ear. Like he can just like see things and implement them almost pretty much instantly. So that's... Yeah, I think it's exciting because Japan really needs some guys to step forward. Yes, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and even right now, like the rising cards, because they can't get foreigners in, and the foreigners that are here are the ones competing, um, they can't get foreigners in, so they're kind of cycling through whatever fights they've got. And some of them aren't as, I suppose, exciting. So when the borders open up and they can get better opponents here too, that's going to be even more exciting. I'm actually excited to see him take on some of the Russian guys because I know they got some really strong heavyweights um, from Russia. Mm. Yeah. Well, what do you think about them? I mean, have you watched much of Manoa? I mean, he was really huge when I was there, obviously. Yeah. yeah. You know, have you watched much of Manoa? I mean, what do you think about him fighting Manoa? Uh, it's an interesting matchup, and now with the um, with the the rules being changed to like no, or not changed, but kind of you know the the elbows, no elbows, and knees to the head, and stuff like that was a bit of a surprise because we've been working on elbows with him, so I've been really excited for him to use some of these elbows, but um, it just presents a new challenge, and I'm kind of excited because it's a it, it's a different approach, a, a different approach to to the fight. You know, because he's not a heavyweight, he moves differently. He shoots for different things, and so we've obviously got to be careful of the the legs and him coming in like that. Um, and he's pretty, he's kind of agile too. So he's going to be kind of wriggly, trying to keep keep him down. And it's going to be an interesting fight. It's going to be neat to see what um, Siyoshi can do. Um, you know, within the confines of the the rules. Yeah. So what do you think of Ryzen having, you know, kind of being over there now, you know, the fight game was <clears throat> really huge when I was there, but it's kind of changed a little. Do you think it's gaining? I mean, I know right now it's different because of the pandemic. Yeah. But do you feel like it's gaining or? Yeah, gaining? no, I think it, I think it does. I think it is. Sorry. I think it is gaining despite the, well, even, you know, with the pandemic, it's kind of, like you said, tough, but um, it's they starting to air it again more on mainstream TV, which is a huge sign um, for Japan. So um, the mainstream media and a lot of the fighters are actually moving into, you know, for modeling and sponsorship and whatnot. They're moving more into like the mainstream brands and stuff. So they're becoming more of a, um, I suppose they're moving back into society because after fighting had kind of gone down here after Pride and whatnot. I suppose people had faded out a little bit um, in the mainstream. So now that's all coming back. So it's really exciting. And there's some really good kind of perspective um, opportunities out there for fighters here in Japan, which is really exciting. Yeah. So maybe talk about what do you think, like, you've developed since your last fight? <clears throat> oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, that's a year and a half ago. Um I think my ground has definitely worked a lot more on my ground because the last few fights, um, well, the first couple fights, I had pretty much no ground, so I stayed away from it. Tell them about um, what, and, what we're trying to do with you, you know, and something about the excited about. Uh, I don't know if I was allowed to talk about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Don't give, you don't have to give away anything. Yeah, yeah. We'll give, we'll, we'll give Todd the exclusive. We'll give Todd the exclusive. So 
Um, I'm actually looking at fighting open weight class. So, mm. yeah, and that so can, very big opponents. Is that why? Um, just because almost the same reasons that Ensign did it when he was in his prime. That that challenge that no you you know, fight weight doesn't matter. Pat in. <laughs> I'm just joking. Are you gonna fight Mia? I'm taking the other way. We go bigger. <laughs> I'm, oh, yeah. the big I'm, just, I'm just messing with you now. You know, <laughs> I thought, you know, I had a friend in Japan whenever he said like a joke that no one laughed at. He kind of said it was an American joke. <laughs> yeah. He's a Japanese guy, but he would say it was American. Yeah, I get that was like American joke, I guess. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> I wanted to say that to Ensign, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, when we mentioned it to Sakaki Bada, he actually threw out Gabby Garcia's name. So oh. that would be an interesting challenge. Yeah. You, you, she, and, she's so gigantic. Yeah, I think she's a little bit uh, a little bit taller than Tsuyoshi about. So he'd be the perfect sparring partner. She that. might be bigger than him, though. Yeah, I think she's a little bit, yeah. <laughs> but So that would be such an interesting challenge. I mean... Where else in the world would you get an opportunity to test yourself? Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and fighting is fighting. Like, everyone fights for different reasons. And She hasn't really yeah. fought many young opponents, though. They've been having her fight older yeah. women. Yeah, you know, I actually really feel, feel sorry for Gabby because she's really wants to be serious about her fighting. Mm -hmm. But they have her fighting these kind of, you know, the, like the pro wrestlers and stuff. So it would just be, that would be such an awesome challenge. And yeah, I do feel sorry for her because she does. It's, there's just no one her size too, though, to fight. But she does really want to be taken seriously, and she's putting in the training too. So yeah, yeah, it's got to be different. I mean, even if she went to the UFC, I don't think there's people she could fight. No. Yeah, no, there isn't. I mean, in the UFC too, like you can't fight with the the weight classes too far apart, right? So yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's difficult for someone like her. Yeah. So it's been interesting because it's taken me, oh, I've been thinking about it for a few months now, seriously. Um, you know, the, considering the fighting open weight. And I suppose it's spurred on by all the kind of troubles I've been having with my, my weight and whatnot. So it's been really frustrating. And I just remember sitting there going, wouldn't it be awesome just to, I envy you, you know, to instant saying, being able to fight with no weight class. That would just be such a nice thing not to stress about yeah. leading into a fight. And then I kind of sat there and I thought, wait, I wonder if could, this is Japan. Could we not do that? And so, yeah, yeah. We, we thought about it and he presented it to them and they actually seem really keen. So that's likely to be my, my future fights is in the open weight class. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. It's exciting. <laughs> yeah. You could smile smaller, bigger. Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't know, I mean, if they would give you any, because like Ensign said, you're having a hard time finding one your size, smaller, anything. Yeah. I wonder how many fights they would give you, you know? Well, <clears throat> I, I guess if you beat Gabby, I mean, they'd give you all the fights you wanted, you know? Well, Gabby's definitely a, 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 fight, a fight in the future, but I'm thinking more giving her a little bit more, uh, you know, some practice on, Fighting these bigger girls, they, they know Rising can bring in a lot. Rising bring brought, brought in a lot for Gabby to fight. So, yeah, but they brought in like these old ladies, right? Wasn't it like a lot older? No, they were actually <laughs> the, before the old ladies. They brought in like the the, the 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 Samoan ladies, like that kind of big girls, not more like kickboxers. Yeah, I think. I think there's like someone from the cash register at Lawson's or something. That's... That's, <laughs> that seemed that like could be. Well, they grow, those, those girls dropped Gabby Garcia, though, you know? <laughs> so they knew how to at least throw a punch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it looked I mean, a little weird, like, the matchup they were having, though. That it almost seemed like, that, almost seem like a circus. It almost seemed like a little circus thing, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I don't think Pride would even went that far, probably. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. They might have. So what is that? Uh, toughen up the hands. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. You know, what do you think about, like, I was talking to Chris about the bare knuckle. What, yeah. Now, he said he doesn't do a lot of this weird stuff, but guys are, like, punching sand or, 
hitting the bag bare knuckle and what do you think about conditioning of the hands i do this because it, uh, it, i mean you know um if you feel my hands i make a fist my hands are like rock and it's it's not just for strengthening the hands it's also when you you do hammer fists like that the hands are so much tighter it's 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 more of a, i think it's a better weapon now what is it that he's hitting there it's all sand hmm. like a bag it's of sand huh? yeah it's a bag of a uh, like a canvas bag full of sand and you have like your own rock climbing wall there yeah is that your house yeah this is my house right here <clears throat> so you were able to put that on the side of your house they don't they didn't care yeah, no. I, well, I got freaking footwork ladders on the ground. Footwork so, girls sitting here. Yeah, because, you know, I know Japan's kind of strict. They just say, yeah, you can do it. Well, I didn't ask, so. <laughs> that they never came good. by and said, hey, you got to take this down, you know? Not yet, not yet. <laughs> Knock on wood. Now, someone's asking this. I don't even know what this is. What is Makiwara? That's kind of what that is. Uh, in, in karate, they have a um, they have a wood board that's wrapped up in uh, ropes. That's the makiwara. Oh, and he said hojo undo. I don't even know what that is. What is that? Hojo undo. <laughs> well, I have no idea what he's talking about there. Yeah, yeah he mentioned makiwara. Sorry, Mike, that went over my head, man. I don't even know what... If you want to... Clarify, I'll be happy to tell them what you're saying. Yeah, I saw you were doing all that work in your uh, so, in your yard so roof, and stuff. The roof's up, and this, look at this pond. It's like a pool. It's yeah, huge. it's awesome. Do you guys have, like, frogs in Japan? I mean, I know I was in Japan, but, you know, like, if, in Oklahoma, you'd have frogs in there pretty fast. Yeah, uh, there's green frogs. There's tree frogs, but they don't, uh, there's, not, there's not much of a problem. Yeah. And I had a friend, he had a koi pond, and uh, a guy I used to know, and he, uh, raccoons kept eating his koi. Yeah, there's raccoons here, but um, we got our raccoon guards here. Yeah, yeah. Because he, he put a gate, my house. <laughs> he put a fence over the water, and they chewed right through the fence. Wow, really? Oh, shit. Yeah. And just ate the koi again. Wow. So I mean, even the even the fencing that he put over the water didn't do anything to. Yeah, I heard those oh. raccoons are real clever little bastards, man. Yeah, and mean too. At least the ones here are. We've seen some. We seen. I seen some on the drive in the neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, if they get cornered, they can be pretty dangerous if they're big. Oh, enough. really? Yeah, they're yeah. they're like they're like hanging out in the rice fields and stuff. Yeah, if they're scared, yeah, they can be pretty dangerous. Oh, shit. Okay. If they're scared and big enough, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. I'll make they, sure I don't corner one, man. Yeah. They'll attack you. If they're big enough and they're they're in fear, that they'll jump you for sure. Oh, shit. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you know, I, this whole um, – Japan's uh, kind of swinging back to normal because, you know, the, um, the last event in uh, Rising – they only could put in 25%, but I think they're allowing a little bit more this time. So slowly they're, um, I think Japan is getting a lot better with the pandemic. So hopefully it continues on this uh, positive swing. And hopefully someday, this, someday soon, this all can be back to normal already, man. This is pretty hardcore, man. Uh, you know, this whole thing. Why don't you show us your dogs, man? Okay, well, let me <laughs> let me go get let me get Tamashi out. Tamashi. Yeah, yeah, bring him out. If you guys Tamashi's, got any questions, Tamashi's just shoot them down here. Uh, Tamashi, come here. Wait, how did, can I turn this? Oh, I can't turn this around. Yeah, you can. Tamashi, come here. This guy's so funny, man. He'll wait in the back. Look. Come here, Tamashi. Hey, come here. <laughs> He's just staring at me. 
He's trying to make you do what he wants, most likely. Here's my baby coys. Yeah, I mean, that, you're doing a lot of amazing stuff at your house, man. It makes me want to do some projects of mine. You know, you know that's just the thing, too. I, I'm actually starting to breed koi. I bought, um, there's a, I actually have five that are pretty good bloodline in here. They're all, like, real tame, too. They'll come up to the hand. They don't freak out on the hand and stuff. Oh, it's free. The water is freezing. How fast do they get big, do you know? Really fast, because this is, uh, I think this is like six months. Hmm. And you can, can you sell those? Uh, I don't know. I, I probably could. Um, this, like this size right here, you stick how big these are. Hmm. I mean, why are you breeding so many of them? I mean, are you going to, what are you going to use them for? Shit, I'm breeding so many because they, that's how much gave birth. <laughs> it was like a natural birth. Hmm. Hey, what you that, doing in here? That dog, man. I know he's he's a he's a funny one. He kind of looks like the that orc from uh, Lord of the Rings. I'll have to I'll have to point it out to you. There was one, and I think it was the second one. Yeah. You remember that orc in Lord of the Rings? The. <laughs> Could do the same thing, eh? Yeah. I would do a little more different stuff though. Okay. What time is good? Yeah, why do they get so muscular? Like Bernie is incredibly muscular. That's their natural. They're natural like that. That's they're called American bullies and they're bred to have that muscle. Just set up the time. Because like the other one, Cowgirl's not that muscular. She's a female. Yeah. It's a pretty buff female. And then and then Tomashi's kinda maybe not as shredded but big. Yeah, he's a bully. He's big. But Bernie looks like all muscular. <laughs> yeah, Bernie's a Bernie's a specimen. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. They just they just grow like that, huh? Yeah, that yeah, it's unreal. It's like you don't really do much. You don't need to like train them or try to get them big or anything. This is the now, did, you, did, do. did you put that together? Someone put that together for you with the pump and all that. I did that. Damn. I just bought it and put it in the pond. <laughs> you just dug a hole and then you just put the pump in the pond? Yeah. And Sarah thinks that one's her pool, but it's not. <laughs> so it's either going to be Sarah's pool where the koi's will be in her pool, or it's going to be the koi pond that Sarah can swim with the koi's. It might have to be a little bit bigger to be a pool. Shit, I don't know, man. It's like, almost like a little jacuzzi. This guy's asking if you have any turtles. He may have one if he has water around there that much longer. I had one. But as you know, turtles are like uh, Houdinis. Yeah? They, they have this knack of escaping ponds. I had one, and I called him, I named him Rambo, and he was actually Urson's turtle. <laughs> and when they moved out, I, he didn't take them with him, and... Uh, he, I just raised him for another like six, seven years, and then he eventually uh, decided to move on to better places. <laughs> he went and walked away somewhere. Did I? Did I? Did you hear me jerking, joking when I said Sarah should fight me? That's not. That's not much of a joke, though. That actually <laughs> might be a possibility. That might be a possibility. I was just being it. Yeah. <laughs> I bet Rising would love that. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say that'd be a great grudge match, you know. I think they'd be afraid to bring that to me, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a bad joke on my part. I think I think that would I think that would hit a lot of people into just the wrong string in the hearts. Man, I mean, though, even I think her family would cringe at that. <laughs> I was like, if you're having trouble finding an opponent, and you know, she's right there. Right? Like, actually, she's in Guam. Huh? Yeah. She, I think she got married for her fourth time, huh? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how you, how you, how that works. <laughs> Four times. Four times a charm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe five times a charm. <laughs> I don't see how, how someone could get married four or five times. It'd be hard. That's crazy, huh? 
Yeah. I would think I would think there'd be a point where you just give up on that shit already, man. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Like you would think they would not want to do it anymore after a while. I know, yeah. It's no shit, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't want to tie you up too long. We've done this for about an hour. Most people aren't really asked too many questions, but I was hoping some people would ask more questions. They're just kind of watching. But uh yeah, there's a UFC event going on right now. Oh, I'm gonna think... oh, right. I'm gonna go watch I it. think Hermanson versus uh Vittori should be a good main event. I never heard of those two guys. Hermanson's like a really good submission guy and Vittori's a, a Italian kid. He's big guy, he's undefeated. I'm it's looking a good forward matchup. to uh, I'm looking forward to Louis Smoker. He's a Hawaii boy, that's why. Yeah. Yeah, I think his fight is still – they had to cancel three fights on the card, like, last minute. But Jeez. I believe his wasn't one of them. I think he is competing. He should be I'm fighting kind of, I'm watching a college he, football game, really, but I think he was a, I think he was the third fight on the card, yeah? Yeah. I haven't been looking at the results, really. But I think, he, I think he had maybe lost a couple of fights or maybe his last one. Maybe yeah, I think that – yeah, he, he hasn't been doing too well. Hmm. Yeah, I think the white, uh, aside from Max, they're all kind of still having some of the same problems as yeah. before. I think the last fight, all the Hawaii kids were lost, yeah? Yeah. The ground, they're all losing on the ground just like before. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing how that still happens after all this time. I know, yeah, you wouldn't think, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I was telling people online, there's always Brother been a, a divide between, like, the fight community and the jiu-jitsu community on Oahu, you know, like the fight community is usually more like the West side poor. Oof. And then you have upper to middle jujitsu guys, you know, townies, you know, I would say. I don't know, Max, isn't Max, Max's place is pretty good. Yeah, they kind of mix it real good. Yeah? Oh yeah, Ryland, yeah, Ryland was doing it. Yeah, Ryland's job. awesome. Sure. So they got Ryland with them, shit. Yeah. <laughs> you can't get a better jujitsu guy in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. Maybe it's just their mentality, you know. I don't know. I don't. I never understood why that was. But yeah, no it, sure. Though. Yeah. But I appreciate well, you, just, you doing this. You know, it doesn't look like too many people want to ask too much stuff here. This is my quarantine. People, my quarantine. Huh? Not not bad a quarantine place, huh? Yeah. Why Why did you decide to put the astroturf in there so you don't have to? Yeah, because the dogs the, are, the dogs are killing the grass, man. Right? And by eating it? No, they're just by running on it. They just the grass. I couldn't keep the grass alive. Yeah, but how do you keep the astroturf clean with dogs like that? I just shoot it down every time they pee or shit, and I, I, I keep it pretty clean. It's just right now it's a fall, so you can see the astroturf's pretty cool, man. But just a freaking. I would think it'd be not... hard to clean some of that stuff out of there. What? I would think it'd be hard to clean some of those stains. Not really, man. It's easy. You just shoot it down with water. There's, you know, there's all the cracks in the, in the, in it, so it, yeah. it drains to the ground. Oh wow! So it works out pretty good, man. It's better than mowing, so. Oh hell yeah! And better yeah. than having dirt where everything gets dirty. Plus, you're not really allowed to have a lawnmower out there either, making noise, huh? No, we. I have one. <laughs> oh, I had one. I had one. <clears throat> Yeah, you don't even need enough of that. I mean, that uh, that's pretty cool, man. Was that the house you were living at when I when, I never went to your house? Were you living there when I was there before or no? Yep, this is the same house. Hmm. Same house, man. Yeah, next time you're in Japan, come by. Let's have a barbecue. Why do you have so many gasoline there? Just to tell you, that's uh, um, for the heaters. Uh, I thought you were preparing for the end of the world or something. Uh, no. I I'm not like I'm not that kind of guy. Yeah. Look at the look at the dog. Look at this huge dog house. Is that where they they sleep in there? Yeah, this is their room, like bigger than a person's room. But they sleep in your house, though, right? No, they take turns. Hmm. So they're in the house. They're not in the house. They're in the house. Not, no, they're they're off and on. Oh, you just keep them that way. Yeah, you keep them. You know, sometimes it's hard for Sarah to sleep because they sleep on her and shit, and they take the blankets. And you know how it, dog people know that you can't really get very good sleep with the dogs. Okay, this guy has a question now. 
Ensign's pretty high on Horiguchi, I would think. He's saying, do you think Horiguchi can uh, make a strong comeback? I think in Ryzen for sure, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I think so. I, th I believe that he, got, he gets a rematch, yeah, with um, Kai Asakura, yeah? Yeah. I think Horiguchi's going to freaking eat him up. Yeah, I think in Ryzen, he's still like the top guy. I mean, yeah, yeah, Hor Horiguchi is. I mean, I think I think he could actually still make a good showing in uh in a UFC. It's just freaking Demetrius is just something else, you know. Maybe you should recruit him to your gym if Crazy B is breaking up. <laughs> no, I think he hasn't been with Crazy B for a while. You know? I think he's moved on. Yeah, to American the, Top Team. Yeah, American Top Team. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, don't, I wonder. I wonder what's gonna happen with Crazy B, yeah? Because even I think Boku left too, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, he wasn't really fighting much anymore, was he? I know no, he, he actually, he actually still was. Yeah, I know he had a fight, but you know, I don't. Yeah, know. Yeah, he wasn't that. He wasn't that active, yeah. Yeah, serious. He was looking into doing stuff still. But Yachi, I mean, Yachi could still continue fighting, even though he wasn't. Having as much success. I was telling Sarah, I mean, Japan really needs someone to step forward. So, I, you know, the fact that you're training this guy, it could have a huge impact. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm down. I'm, I'm spending the time now. I'm doing this guy's saying Boku retired. Yeah, he retired, but he didn't retire because after in the – in the post fight, he kind of said something like, "Oh, I don't know if I do have something, I'll, I might fight again." And he was, yeah. It's hard to tell because it might have been just on, uh, you know, <clears throat> that that down of losing. And I think I don't think he's uh, actually really decided yet. Do any of your guys that used to train with Nori do they ever talk about like how things kind of went down? No, man, it's, it's like a taboo thing. No one just talks about it at all. But, I mean, like Issei, a lot of those guys are going to train with Issei, and he was he was part of that crew. Yeah, I know. That's why, it's, it, it, you know, for me, I think that's probably a reason why I, they wouldn't come to me because of that little um, the little rift, and there's a little, it's a little bit of a touchy subject that for, you know, for them to quit um, crazy be one thing, for them to quit and come to me, it's almost yeah. like a slap in the face to them. So I think that's one of the things that they might actually avoid doing. But I'm so close to Issei. I go, I'm, we're yeah. going to bring Issei. We're going to go train at Issei's gym. So I'm probably going to see those guys. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, so I, I mean, of course, if they're there, I'm going to try and help them all in their game. You know, I mean, you never know. You never know. Now this guy's asking, are you going to be cornering Siyoshi on December 31st? Yes, I, I will. Assume, yeah, right? Yes, I will. Yes, I'll be there. So R Rising's pretty excited about it because, um, you know how I, you know, after I retired, I pretty much dropped off the grid and didn't um, corner people or train fighters anymore. They're very excited to have my face back into the scene. You know, I mean, I was, I was real skeptical that they they might not have wanted me around because they're a little afraid that I, I was one of the persons that they cannot control. But Saka Kibata was super excited when he heard that I was going to be training Siyoshi, and he was actually very uh, supportive of that. He he really actually encouraged that. So that surprised me. It's pretty cool. I mean, for me to think that they're not afraid of me and they're not um, trying to avoid me, it's kind of a good thing to know. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I think this uh... – it's gone over a lot of people's heads, although Sarah has said the Japanese media picked up on it. But, I mean, the fact that you're working with him and the fact that with his background and, you know, the ability he has, it, it could have a really big impact. Yeah, and I'm, you know, you know what the big thing is about that whole thing is, is that I'm not training him like a regular fighter. I'm, you, what you're going to see is you're going to see a fucking warrior. So you're going to be somebody that's going out there not to win, but just to hurt and to be willing to, you know, willing to die in there. So I think, uh, I think it, it'll be good for the uh, MMA world. I mean, I think Japan, Japan still loves that type of fighting. Japan will be really excited about that. So we'll see. I mean, 
not many people pick it up on it yet. I don't know, maybe because I'm so so old school. Not many people know who I am, and maybe my name's faded out. But I'm excited. I'm excited to see what Shoshi will do. Well, you know, I appreciate you taking time to do this. You know, I don't want to take up all your time today, but, you know, I know you're busy. You know, it doesn't look like many people have too many questions running, but, uh, you know, I appreciate you taking time to do this. You know, it was fun to talk to you about him, for sure. Maybe we could do it again uh, after the fight. Yeah, for sure. I'd love to do that, man. That'd be awesome. Or maybe when Sarah fights, too, you know, we can kind of promote her, too. For sure, man. I'd love to. Right on, Todd. I love your channel, man. I'm watching your channel all the time. All right, man. I appreciate it. I'll right do on, more. Right on, You think you need Ryan to go? Ryan Bo tomorrow. Shoot, man. Okay. All right. All right. Take care. All right. Yeah.